Hey guys, I very recently did a cut test on this knife. This is the uh, TBFK by LA Police Gear. Uh, this is an SC5VN knife for $35 uh, with sculpted G10 handles on ball bearings. Uh, that was probably a pretty exciting result uh, being uh, such a cheap knife with what is evidently a pretty good steel in it. So it's not kind of fake or mislabeled, it's actually SC5VN, which is cool. But, um, just to counterbalance that, I'm sort of going to rush out this review a bit because there's a few things you need to know before you go and order one just on materials alone because there's actually a fair few problems with this knife. So um, I'll uh, give you the, uh, the full review. I'll start off with the good stuff, but I'll also be the bearer of some bad news if you're thinking about grabbing a, a uh, really, really good knife for $35. It's not what you're gonna be getting. You're getting some really good materials for $35, but not a particularly good knife. Anyway, without further ado, uh, let's get into it. All right, so first of all, I'll just do some size comparisons just so you get an idea of how big the knife is. So this is it closed, and this is it open. So I'll open it up, and this is it next to the Benchmade 940. So you see, it's a um, mid to larger sized uh, everyday carry or you know, folding style knife. This is next to a Spyderco Dragonfly 2. Which is a much smaller and lighter knife. This is it next to the Cold Steel Fin Wolf, which is a similar size knife with a much different purpose. And this is it next to an Ontario Old Hickory Cleaver. There we go. It's a different knife entirely. So the knife weighs 138 grams when you compare that to the Benchmade 940, which is 83 grams. Um, we compare it to the Fin Wolf, which is uh, 98 grams um, and Dragonfly obviously weighs almost nothing which is uh, 35 grams it's a pretty big and heavy knife so that doesn't bother me particularly I find that the uh, focus on weight of knives isn't particularly important to me seeing as we all carry around all sorts of stuff all the time so people the minute people stop carrying giant phablet phones <laughs> I'll start worrying about weight but what it does uh, what I do um, concern myself is with is dimension so how much uh, space it takes up in your pocket so this one isn't too bad on that uh, it's no Benchmade 940 which is a much thinner um, knife so I'm talking about things you can keep next to it so it's not too bad like that it's not as bad as like some Spydercos or you know knives with big uh, opening holes and things like that even the Spyderco Dragonfly is a fairly wide knife despite being a short and very thin knife uh, it's also a bit wider than, uh, than usual but this is done probably with more of the idea of having a fuller grip and the fuller grip is achieved with this uh, G10 handle so it's a sculpted G10 handle which means there's machining done around here to make for a rounded surface so I I guess that's commonly attributed as a, a bit more of a manufacturing cost as well, therefore perhaps um, describing the value of the knife as well. So I'll go into the good parts of the knife because there are some good parts and largely when the knife is like this, it is completely fine. It is actually really comfortable to hold, so it's got a good grip when you've got it in your standard sort of knife grip. Your thumb rides on the jimping fairly well. Um, the Sculpt the G10 handles, fill the palm well. I've got larger size hands, but I don't think even smaller hands would have too much of a problem. Smaller hands probably wouldn't be connecting like mine do, but you know, it's um, not an issue there at all. It's got a you know, moderately rounded, smooth parrot's beak um, at the back, so nothing that's really gonna um, you know, lock your hand in backwards, but then it's not the sort of knife that you're gonna be swinging or chopping. It's just a good, solid grip, perhaps more worrying about hand going up and the flipper tab and the jimping and the jimping here on the liner does stop that. So it is an ergonomic knife, fairly ergonomic. The pocket clip uh, in this configuration is actually not too bad to squeeze and hold as well. So I'm usually not a fan of tip down, well I'm not a fan of tip down at all and generally a reason is because the clip always sits in a weird spot for me, usually sitting in about this part of my hands. But this one is quite, quite sort of smooth and flat so not too bad there either. The other thing is the blade. The blade is a really well done blade. It's got a good steel, obviously. I won't harp on too much about the SC5VN. It did well in my cut tests. It cut 180 times. And um, it's ground and made very well into a blade as well. So the blade grind is quite nice. It's quite thin behind the edge so it can slice, uh, which I'll probably put a bit of a demonstration montage up on the screen right now. It can slice and it can uh, poke and pry and it's got a strong sort of flat um, primary grind making for a saber kind of I guess complete finish there um, so yeah very well done blade it's got a good shape the swedge here means it's a little bit pointy and pokey but it's um, still not completely weak uh, feeble tip either so you can use this knife for you know anything rather than just 
if you're an LA policeman and you're looking for some LA police gear, you can probably take this knife camping or whatever. Completely usable blade and very functional. Uh, it's not the best looking blade in the world and it does look a bit odd, I think, with the with the flipper. It's just not a particularly appealing visually knife, but in terms of performance, the blade and the handle, when the knife is open, uh, do a completely fine job of um, being a folding knife, absolutely. The problems you get with this knife are when it is closed and when you're trying to store it in your pocket and when you're trying to open it. There are some real kind of junk knife choices being made here. Like there's stuff that you'd get on gas station knives and this is kind of what the knife reminds me of. Like a knife that you'd get, and in America we don't call them gas stations here, we call them petrol stations, but I understand in America at your gas stations uh, you get you can buy like sort of junk knives that aren't particularly good and they've all got sort of similar features. They often have flippers now, they've all got tip down carry which is what this one does and they've all got giant knobbly thumb studs and so this knife goes with that as well. So first of all let's get into the thumb studs. The thumb studs are for a start unnecessary. This knife is a pretty decently flipping knife. I'm not going to put the flipping in the good category because the whole package of the flipper concept isn't executed particularly well here, and I'll get into why later. But the thumb studs are utterly unnecessary. There isn't a flip you make that doesn't ever really activate unless you do it really, really, you know, half assed. So, yeah, unnecessary thumb studs, which if they were small wouldn't be an issue, but these are so darn huge that they lead into the next problem. So that is me trying to just sort of subconsciously put the knife into my pocket. Some studs just catch on the seam, which is annoying, but you know, position them around, that's fine. That's probably 50% of the time you put the knife into your pocket. The other 50% of the time, they completely catch on the pocket and pull the blade open. There we go. So what's happened there is the thumb stud collected the seam of my pocket and opened the blade in my pocket. Which can happen unless you're like, I like when I use a pocket knife to be able to just effortlessly, not really thinking about it, in and out of my pocket, nice and easy. This knife here, it's got some problems with pocket carry, for sure. All because, well, 80% because of those dumb thuds, thumb studs that don't do anything anyway. So, it's just one of those features that they sort of think, because another thing is, say you want to open this knife with the thumb stud. You're holding it like this, right? The flipper is just pressing into the fat of your finger. It just, unless you back all the way off and launch like that, the standard grip for holding a knife with the thumb stud is you kind of just hold it in your hand, crank it open. And every time it rubs past your finger, I've been doing it a lot as I've been sort of working this review out. And yeah, you get a little bit of redness. It's just a dumb thing. It's just, it doesn't make sense. Just take them off. It's fine. It just shows a lack of design confidence that they know that they're probably their, their mass batch isn't going to get 100% good flipping knives. So they're, so just focus there. Sorry, I was having focus issues there. So the lack of, um, it's like that design courage to just get rid of all the other mo opening mechanisms if you've got a flipper on. Um, it's, I also, I don't like how Spyderco keeps the functional spider hole on their flippers too. It's like, dudes, just make sure your flipper's good enough and no one will ever need it. So just either have it small as your trademark thing or just don't have it at all. And thumb studs are the same. And it's just that double blow of them not only being there but being like huge and not comfortable to use and massively catching on your pocket due to the unchangeable tip down right handed carry. So there's that as well. Um, not super keen. Another thing is the detent on the knife is able to be shaken out. So it's, um, yeah, not great. It's, uh, yeah, and just in, in company with that um, pocket clip um, thumb set issue, just not particularly good. So there you go. Um, some other main, like, some other more minor things, like the scales here are clearly just painted and they're like already sort of wearing with the hand, like they're just like that mottled blackish finish already, like so that paint's just gonna come straight off. Not a big deal, but just something else. Um, but yeah, overall it's just a knife that doesn't carry or like open or function particularly well in all of the stages between it being um, from in your pocket to actually being used. When you're actually holding it in your hand, 
as a knife that's open, then that's fine. But then really, if you don't care about that, why don't you just get a sheath fixed blade knife? Because every other aspect of this isn't super great in the pocket. And I know, I know, people are gonna say, oh, it's $35, what more do you want for $35? You know what? I would forgo the amazing steel choice. I would be happy to sharpen it 50% more if it was just a tighter overall package. So I understand for $35 in the US, you can get a RAT 1 in D2 steel, and that's a knife that's really well assembled, and it's you know not my particularly favorite knife in the world, but it's a knife of about this size. It's really well assembled with a steel that's gonna hold its edge for a pretty good long time. Maybe not as long as the S35VN, but a pretty good long time. And it's not gonna have any of these issues. It's got more of a purity of design. Yeah, it's not a flipper, but flippers, who said flippers are the best things to do? In fact, for hard for hard working knives, which I guess is what this knife's trying to sell itself as, it's a police knife, isn't it? Um, bearings are probably one of the, the weaker choices because bearings are like a much more wearable form of, um, of you know, opening system and washer system anyway. So I'm not quite sure there either. Um, just a couple other things, just the lockup isn't great on mine. It's a bit of up and down rock and a bit of side to side. So there's that too, but you know, that's what you get with a cheap flipping knife, well, sometimes. So yeah, it's just, there's too many problems here for me to recommend it, despite having great steel. It is, it feels like a junk knife with just some nicer materials than usual. So instead of just your standard plastic and HCR13 MOV, yeah, they've gone and sculpted some G10 and put S35 V, I don't know. But then, you know, G10's no more expensive really than plastic. It's a bit nicer and knife people appreciate it a bit more, but really it's probably a couple of cents. And yeah, the S35VN, that's a great price for it. It really is. But then it's about the only real sort of notable aspect of this knife. There's too many other flaws for me to recommend it. So yeah, that's the, um, that's the knife. I'm sorry to say that right now there is still isn't that perfect mix of amazing steel for an amazing price. I still think the best choices are like your Ontario Rat Ones, like your Buck, your Buck Vantage knives, they're totally fun. I've got 420HC, they're good. Like it's, the steel is, yeah, I know you wanna have it in a great steel for not very much money. Everyone wants that, but I think here they've not put any effort into actually designing a good knife. They've just gone and settled on having, hey, if we get S85 VN, that'll create enough of a, enough of a ruckus that everyone will buy it. And you know what, it probably has. It probably has done very well for them. But in my experience, there's a lot about this knife that I don't like, uh, pretty much in every other sense. So I would stick with your rat ones. I would stick with your Rook. If you are wanting a good Chinese knife, that's, I'd stick with your Rook uh, P801SF. Uh, I'll link that in a, in a card at the top. That is what I think is probably the best budget knife going at the moment. Yeah, the steel only holds its edge for about half the time, but so be it. it sharpen it a bit more, it's a cheap knife. Um, I would rather a cheap knife that had good, um, well put together design chops and have to sharpen a little bit more. That's just me though. So overall, I couldn't really recommend this one. Um, I know it sucks and it's, I was hoping that it'd be just the perfect mix of everything, but yeah, it's got great materials, but it's just not quite there as a knife. It just feels a little bit hokey. And I think you would feel that too if you had one in hand. I know it's only $35. If you're happy to take a chance on it, you might not, be bothered by this. You might might get some pliers and get these off somehow. I don't know, but it's um, just not for me. I'm sorry to say, just not for me. All right, dudes. I'll um, see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Bye now. Oh yeah. If um, if you think I've been too hard on the knife, just remember the TBFK actually stands for, according to the site, the best fucking knife. So. I figure when you make a claim like that, you, you, the good, right Australian thing to do is adopt some tall poppy syndrome and, and take you down a couple of pegs. So there you go.